Rub up your engines! Well, you know, Rivian came the first ones out to actually produce an electric truck and sell it in the United States. Their stock recently took a big dump because they gave the economic forecast for the quarter. And not only were their profits inconsequential, of course, they didn't make that many of them. So all the investors are saying they didn't make much money and they didn't make very many cars. Well, if you ask me, this is the tip of the iceberg for these companies. People are evaluating them as billions and billions of dollars. But they've hardly made any cars. They're losing money. It's like a crazed investment, like the gold rush. Only this time it's crazy investments into car manufacturers thinking they're all going to be just like Tesla. You can buy them for $100 and then four years later, they're worth $50,000 a share. You know, I mean, everybody gets into this fantasy thing. They should really be aware of and at least now the stock market is kind of catching up. And people are saying, hey, they don't make very many cars. They're not making any money. Why are people investing in this company? Huh? Electric pickup trucks. They may not become popular at all. Driving pickup trucks around, they got a particular amount of things they want. They want to tow a lot, carry a lot of weight. And of course, electrics, the more weight you put on, the more the lower their range is, the faster they're going to run out of power. And a guy with a pickup truck who wants to be somewhere fast, if he's got to be sitting there for an hour or two charging up his pickup truck, he's not going to be a happy man, right? So, you know, betting on something like that, it's not something I'd want to get involved. And I'll tell you that, if you watched The Big Short or read the book, The Big Short, it took years for that guy to make money for his investors shorting because they all lied that the bonds were good. And then when it finally fell apart, yeah, he made money for people, but it took years. Don't think this is an instant, oh, they see it's bad and it drops down. No. People can live on the fantasy for years until the truth finally slaps them in the face and then it goes down the toilet. Well, the rumor of Toyota's death, uh, <laughs> obviously isn't uh, come to fruition. They say now in January, they're going to produce a record amount of cars, more than they ever did. They say they're going to build 800,000 vehicles in January. Realize that Toyota still is the largest manufacturer of cars in the world in terms of units that they built. They built more cars than anybody else. Everyone's forecasting that they're still going to be the largest producers of autos in the world. Shortage of chips or not. They say, you know, they're getting into electrification now. They're showing off their Lexus RZ450E electric car, which should have all the Elon shaking in his boots because he's hobbling together these cars at the Pieces don't even fit right on. Lexus starts making electric cars. You know, they're going to have quality to them. They're going to last a long time. Who knows on that? These are just regular cars we're talking about that they're going to be making more than anybody else. You take, with a grain of salt, all these things about, we're going to be all electric by 2050 and all this crazy stuff. Who knows what's actually going to happen? People are going to fall by the wayside. Maybe whole ideas are going to fall by the wayside. Maybe batteries will fall by the wayside. You got to understand, you can't just get rid of one system and put in another. You could have maybe a good infrastructure of electric cars in the cities for people to go small distances, and then you'd still have gas stations all over the place on a highway so people did long distance traveling. Who knows what's actually going to come out of it? They're still number one in the amount of cars that people are building. I don't see any of that stuff disappearing any time soon. No, I'm amazed. Why do my wheel bearings keep breaking? I got a Corolla 98. I paid for wheel bearings three times since last year. Now, one mechanic said, oh, bearings fall apart in place. Is that possible? You don't keep replacing them in a Toyota. One, they're probably using the cheapest bearings they can find. If you buy the bearings from a Chinese company, they're generally junk. I would not buy them. You want OEM equipment, Ace and stuff. Stuff's made in Japan, right? It's going to last. But the other thing is, a lot of times guys install them wrong. Wheel bearings, tires roll on them, right? They got to be put in place correctly and then tightened up, the big nut in the middle, to the exact specifications with the torque wrench. Because if they're not, if they're too loose, they wobble and they wear out. And if they're too tight, they're binding and they'll wear out. So I'm assuming the guys that you're using are either using cheap wheel bearings and or they're installing them incorrectly. I would go somewhere else. They're obviously not doing a good job because, I mean, I've done wheel bearings on Toyotas and sometimes 15 years later, they're still rolling down the road because I put them together right. You got to make sure you get good ones and they're put together right. So I go to another mechanic first. I wouldn't trust that guy. Sounds like he's just doing sloppy work and I see it all the time. Master Sastre says, Scotty, I got a 2010 Corolla. My belt rattles at cold startup. I've had the belt replaced. And it still does. The mechanic said it didn't do it when I left overnight. Help. Well, your mechanic doesn't know much about cars. The main problem that those things have is they have automatic tensioners on them, right? And that tension is your belt. 
I call them fan belts because I'm old-fashioned, but technically the term is drive belt because you only got one and it does the drive. There's no fan involved because there's an electric fan. The automatic tensioners on those are known failure point and they're going to rattle. And they're going to rattle, especially upon startup. Go to a different mechanic, have them put on an automatic belt tensioner and get a good one. Get an OEM equipment one. Don't go buy the cheapest one you can find at a discount auto parts store because they're made in China. They don't work that well. Sometimes they're worse than your old one. That's just what happens with those things. They're automatically tensioned. They got a spring and hydraulics on them. And eventually it wears out and then it rattles. And eventually it won't work anymore. And then you'd have to replace it. So it's better to do it now than later. It's 12 years old. They ain't have to think about it for years and years. Tell me the fan too says they got a 2011 RAV4. It consumes oil only at high speeds. I got 115,000 miles. Spark plugs are fine. The PCV valve is new. Unfortunately, your engine is worn. I don't know if you bought it new or used. This is why I tell people, if you do anything to your car, any maintenance at all, change the oil and filter. And I change mine every 5,000 miles or so. Now, they say you can go 10, 12,000 miles. Yeah, you can. But guess what? The higher mileage you go, the more the dirty oil which is dirt, which creates friction, will wear the walls of the cylinder, will wear the piston rings, wear the valves, everything wears, and then you get an oil burner. At higher speeds, your engine's going at higher RPMs. Any minor imperfection is going to be accentuated at higher speeds, and it will burn more oil. When I was young, there was a kid that uh, came to our father's gas station in Lewis, New York. He had a Chevy with a big old V8. Every time he'd take it on a highway, drove like a maniac 100-something miles an hour, he'd come in, he'd be two, three quarts low when we checked the oil when he's filling it up. Back in the day, we used to have a full surface. We'd wash the windows, check the oil, right? And I'd say, you know, you're really low again. So what'd you do last night? Oh, he said, I, you know, I went to Toronto, and we were going 100 miles an hour on the highway, we were partying. That's why it burned oil. It didn't burn it that much when it was driving in town. Unfortunately, your engine's worn. Now, really, other than changing your oil more frequently and checking it, you can try various cleaners like the ATS one. I said, but I doubt if anything's going to fix it because when they're at that stage and yours is a 2011, not like the, you know, the recall they had for the 06, 08 ones that had those 2.5 liter four cylinder engines that just burn oil like mad because they didn't make the pistons right. Those, those aren't included in that stuff, but the oil probably wasn't changed enough. So change your oil frequently. Everybody out there, save yourself a lot of money. You'll be happy with Scotty. Buy the right car in the first place because, I mean, it doesn't matter what you do with a Fiat. It's going to wear out fast anyways, just because of the design. A little engine, a lot of power, and they burn themselves out fast. But with a Toyota, if you take care of it, you'll have many years hassle-free drive. I just drove back and forth to Rhode Island, Tennessee with our Toyota Matrix, right? Changed the oil at 5,000 miles. It didn't miss a drop. We're still on the same dot as when I changed it. And we were driving 75 the whole time. So take care of them, the last. Well, Volkswagen, which obviously is starting to electrify pretty quickly. They're building a plate down the street, Chattanooga, building electric cars here in Tennessee. They're still not giving up with diesels. Now, they claim they're going to make all electric cars in the future, right? But they're using the diesel as their last stopgap. And now they say they're making diesel engines that'll run on paraffinic diesel. That's the biodiesel that's more ecologically friendly. So they figure, well, they'll be making all this stuff, especially in Europe. Then they'll be able to sell it because they say, well, this is ecological diesel. It's made like waste from hydro-treated vegetable oil, cooking oil, sawdust, all kinds of things. They'll be able to sell it to the politicians in Europe to say, yes, this is, this is ecological. You can still drive the diesels because we're making the stuff out of all this waste that we had anyways. But that really isn't that bad of an idea. And if you know anything about diesels, these ones do run cleaner. I had customers in Houston that they went around converting their diesels to run on any of this stuff. Now, <clears throat> when they did it themselves, it was a pain in the butt. They had to have special filters and heaters. One guy had a bus, he did it in, and he'd get the old waste oil from the grain traps of restaurants, and then they'd, they'd filter it out, heat it up, and he could run his vehicle on it. It was kind of a pain in the butt. This is a lot further down the line than that. They're commercially making the fuel, so you just pump it in and run it. It's not you know, the hassle that that was. It's done in a large scale and it's done correctly. So maybe not that bad of an idea. And when you smell these things, some of them, they smell like cooking oil coming out of the back. They used a lot of it. Smell like old French fries. Some of them, when he got it from certain restaurants, you could smell it when it was run down the road, kind of smelled like old French fries. And of course, it also reduces the CO2 emissions because like I say, it burns more efficiently. Volkswagen calls it a sensible additional option. Why should they throw away the diesel engines? If somebody wants to make biodiesel for them, why not? If they do it in a mass 
mass production. Hey, it's totally doable if anybody wants to go through the process of actually doing the stuff instead of just talking about it and pretending magic electricity is going to fall from the sky and lithium is going to be everywhere so they make the batteries for the things. And of course, you know, Volkswagen owns Porsche and they're doing that thing in South America where they're trying to make gasoline fuel biologically where they suck the carbon dioxide out of the air and use solar panels and all kinds of different energy to make bio gasoline. So then when the cars burn it and carbon dioxide comes out, they suck it back out of the atmosphere. I gotta say, they're doing some interesting thing, those Germans. So if you never want to miss another one of my new car repair videos, remember to ring that bell.